Hello to any future combo lords watching this, or anyone who happened to stop by in the present tense. Maybe that was already going for a minute. I'm still figuring out how this stream thing hooks up when I have my face possibly in the corner to show cool graphs and stuff. So if I need at any point, I can shrink myself and show these cool bug shapes that I found. And we do have Desmos in the background for when we need. Let me plug in my laptop real quick if anyone has already joined. Thanks so much. And I got cool stuff to show you in a sec. Just need to make sure we keep our battery good while we're doing a nice long afternoon stream. Or nighttime stream to anyone who's watching in other time zones. Oh, gotta move our chair a little closer to this direction for our power source. If the light's crazy, we'll fix it. Also hard in the mud, the chairs like to sweep their legs in like crazy. And there we go. Sorry to anyone who happens to be there who's waiting. Uh, normally I do that setup while I'm getting my stream ready, but I decided to let you join me for the setup. I'm going to pull open my phone so I have access to any chat that might be going on. And then we're going to shrink this screen some of the time to look at some digital plant-like, animal-like things I found. And then we will return to full combo class mode to check out some real animals and plants, including an edible treat of a special type of fruit I got for later. So let me pull open my phone so I can get access to any chat that may be coming through later. Hello everyone, nice to all of the chatters so far. Nice to see you. Someone's writing to, saying to write all the pi numbers. I think they mean prime numbers. Let's see how far I could name prime numbers. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 27, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47. Um, I forget if 53 is or isn't. So that's where we have hit our end. I forget about 53. So uh, at that point, those are all the primes I know for sure. Um, or if you meant pi numbers, that's something else entirely. Who knows? Now, I want to show you guys first before we look at any real world plants or animals, because we know there's always those in the combo classroom. Let's take a look at something really cool I found graph wise that looked like plants and animals a bit to me. So. Here we got our Desmos graphing calculator we've used before, but usually we were having things be what y equals. That's the default. Like if I write x there, they mean y equals x. Sometimes we had the y's and x's mixed together too. Like if it's like x squared plus y squared, and then you put something else on the end, we got different types of circle. But another way you can graph stuff is this thing called polar coordinates. And that's where we're saying radius equals something, and we might involve theta, referring to an angle. And while I'm not going to do a full discussion explaining what polar coordinates fully mean today, because we're just doing a casual little live stream, I need to show you a few crazy things it causes. Now, if I say the polar coordinate is something like radius is the cosine of A, I get this wavy guy. Let's say I put, um, I mean, theta. There. That's good. Now we got a little circle on the side. That's what happens when we take the cosine. If we take the sine, we get a different orientation of the circle right there. Now already I can get a cool one if I say 1 over the sine of theta. Um, or do I want cosine? 
Hmm. Um, do I want an A? Do, 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 do. Whoa! Okay, so now we're starting to go crazy places, as you can see. So, when we start getting into these polar coordinates, one thing we start to see is these spirograph-like shapes. Did you guys ever... Let me try and make it even more spirography. Let's just do sine of A times theta. And A is going to be this little thing right here that we can modify. Did you ever do spirograph? It was this thing where you trace, it's like a board game looking thing, but it's an art project. You trace around these little wheels and you make shapes like this. And I actually have a box of spirograph. And so I'm going to find that and get that at some point. Maybe I'll even be able to find it today. And we can actually try and draw shapes like this. But let's see what happens if I play through A changing. Whoa. So wait, let's zoom in a little bit. Now let's also add another modifier. Let's add like B in front of there for a multiplier. Now we can sort of shrink it, grow it, change different traits about it in different ways. This one kind of can mess with its size a bit. This one can kind of mess with how many petals it has. And there we get like a ribbon. Um, and then we get little like just shapes like that. We get ones that get really clustered. And to whoever said I'm too young for Spirograph, um, I like old-fashioned things. My parents had me play Spirograph, and I liked it. There we go, another ribbon-like one. Really simple at certain stages. What else? Could, ooh, look, is that one? That one's just maybe not digesting at all or something. I don't know. Whoa, it looks like a slinky. Whoa, and look at that. We got this like double cardioid thingy. You look at that one. These are cool. Whoa, that looks like Riemann Zeta esque. You, whoa, cardioid in circular thingy. So there's simple ones, conflict. Oh, there's just a circle. When is that negative one? Um, so. Now, they want to know if A's are rational. I don't know. They'll probably make it, like, infinitely dense, maybe. It might, like, take infinite time to go around or something. I'm not sure. Um, now, let's see what happens when we go sine of... Well, let's just do two signs in a row for now. So that does that. What if we put our A in there? This is like just a different version of it when we doubled the sine. What if I put a cosine in there? Uh, now we're getting more like variation. Maybe. Oh no, B is gone. Now, I found ones that looked like these weird little animals. It was super trippy. So, whoa, that one's cool. Look, I got these frills. I can decide how big the frills are. That's cool. That's too fast. <laughs> um, so, and someone purchased a typewriter. I actually have an old typewriter as well. Um, typewriters are cool. So let's now look at what happens if I take, um, tangent in there. A B is not, there's no more B. Now look, it's like an insect. Do you see that? It looks like a bee. This is one of the ones I noticed looks animal-like. So there's like animals living in these graphs. Simple equations make the same thing natural selection made for the bug. Why does the bug look like that? Because 
over time all the bugs that didn't look like that died and didn't reproduce natural selection and this is like the graph came to the same conclusion that natural selection did so now what happens if we switch around some of these well first let's put a b for the b now we can change this There's another direction of our bug. Bugs. And it looks like flowers at certain times, too. Um, there's a butterfly. So look, now we get this butterfly-like shape. So look, it's flapping. It's like a butterfly. Now, what happens if we switch some of these? Cosine just gives it a middle wing. Whoa, what's this guy? That's a weird type of flower or bug. Look, it's this one's kind of like a flower opening. You know how some flowers have those little bristles in them and then the petals come up and then it like forms like full fruit and stuff. So someone's saying primordial. I think you might mean primordial unless you mean the number thing because primordials are a cool number thing where you multiply all the primes up through a number like a factorial. But primordial is like old and ancient. Um, both cool words. So this is interesting one. B is zero. No matter what A is, it's a circle. Um, so that makes sense. <laughs> zero times that. So now let's not make B zero. Whoa, extra dense. That looks like the sun, doesn't it? It has this shell. Oh, and here's a real life animal. Sage, one of my cats. Um, I'm going to go over here so I can pet him over here because I'm a little worried that over in that zone I didn't clean up all the broken glass yet from yesterday's film shoot. Um, it wasn't a new clock. It was just trying to demonstrate stuff using an old clock that already had shattered glass and more came out. But here's a little sage. You see my little helper? I don't know if you can see him, but he's a really good boy. Hey, sage. So that's the thing, is you need real-world animals along with your digital animals. Let's grow this. Sage, come here. When they come in, I call it, uh, it has two good jokes for what you can call it. You can call it a cameow when the cat comes in. You can also call it a cat meo. So I don't even know which uh, pun to use when they come on the screen, whether I should call it a cat meow or a cameo. So, um, doesn't this look kind of like the sun? You have this dense core, you have these radiating rays, and you have this kind of shell. It looks almost like the earth as well. And here we can sort of like decide if this was our planet that we're making. See, now we're making planets and stars. Um, if this was our star or planet we were making, then um, let me try and get back to the chat because I want to be chatting with you guys too. But um, go to back on here. Yeah, and someone says like pupils and stuff too. Um, yeah, if we're designing eyes and stars, then we can um, kind of adjust how much we want in the pupil or shell. Like if there's a star then it's like how much we want at its core to weigh. And then at this point is when it's about to like supernova or something. Uh, I don't really know the, tech no, the technical terms of what the star does at that state. Um, but if it's an eye too, this could be like, it's shrunk more like that when you're, here, let's adjust the step. Let's make B be able to go even smaller um, steps. Wait, no, no, no. B can go from the same amount. Wait, wait. 
negative 10 to 10 is fine, and then step will make smaller. So I want to be able to adjust it more. Uh, it's not letting me. I need more um, a smaller scale. Yeah, see, I want to go a tiny bit. Oh, whoa. So if that's your eye or your star, something's wrong with it. Um, there we're getting to like, that's if like, if that's an eye, that's when your pupil's really dilated. Uh, or wait, which term's dilated? I forget. The one where it's really shrunk. Like if you looked into a bright light or if you took certain substances, and this would be if you took other sorts of substances or you're in a really dark room. And this is just a cool shift. Let's see what the animation looks like. Whoa. That's cool. So, oh, you can only see my face. I'm sorry. I'm bad at doing that. I'm blocking it. That's bad. Um, yeah, I need someone managing these streams for me. Isn't that cool? Oh, you can like change what's going on. So, now, um, what else can we change? We could switch which one is the tan. Whoa, now it's either really big or infinite. Now is, this is one of those things where it's like you're looking into the center of something that you thought was like just a black hole, but as you zoom in, you see more stuff. Whoa, look at this. Whoa. Whoa. I know it's just having trouble handling the graph, but look how cool this is still. Whoa. All right, you ready to go back outward? Whoa. This is like we're inside like the network of a brain. You're like seeing the neural network. And now we're coming out and we're seeing like the whole cells of nerves. And then you're coming out, and it's like, whoa, is this my eye? This is the very back of the eye. Whoa. So that one's trippy. This is like we're flying through hyperspace in a spaceship. All right. Well, I can spin it too. Okay, yeah, this is disorienting. But yeah, this is insane. So, two tangents might be too much. Let's make one of these a cosine. Can we get anything there? No. no. Okay, something going on. We just need to be all the way up there. This one's like a more minimal version of the other one, unless... Oh, here's the other cat. Dandelion's coming over. All right, we're switching again. Dandelion. Come here. You guys get a double one. We can call sages a cameo, a cat meow, and dandelions a cameo. Come here, dinosaur. Oh, you can see a really fluffy tail, can't you? Well, that's just the start of the story. If you thought that part was fluffy, just wait till you get to see the rest of the little dandelion. These boys are so helpful. They're my little classroom helpers. It's a good little dandelion. And you want to make another cat meow? Where are you, Dandy Sore? Come here. I'll give you pets. Your stream wants to say hi to you. You're getting popular, Dandelion. He was born to be a star. He's so nice and cool. All right. That's our little cat meow. Um, and... People who are spelling it different ways. Uh, it is technically spelled like the...
plant, like D-A-N-D-E-L-I-O-N, one word, but it is purposefully a pun on the fact that he is a dandy and a little lion. So he is dandy, a lion, and as fluffy as a dandelion, therefore I had to name him that. Similarly, his brother Sage is as soft and elegant as a sage bush, and is as wise as a sage, therefore I had to name him Sage. Then since they were both named after plants, I named the stray third one Sassafras, because that seemed to suit him. And the stray one has gotten really nice and learned to love getting pet by me. So, like I named this stream, we're going back and forth between real life and graph life, seeing things. And we've already seen like the eye in the graph and you can see my eyes. Maybe we'll stare up at the sun later without our eyes going directly in it. Um, and uh, visualize stars. Maybe the stream will go on so long that we'll see stars in the sky, who knows? And we are we saw bugs, so we'll go bug hunting later because we already were able to find some bugs in this mix. So what if I see what happens if I go um, Well, I switched that with cosine. Let's try sine, but I don't know. Okay. Now we're going to go a little more gentle on it, and we're going to take the tangent out, because that was the crazy one. And what's going on here? Oh, I'm just zoomed in too much. Let's look at more cool guys here. Um, here I have my spire. I want to make more bugs. So where was my... Oh, there's sort of like a bug. So, uh-oh. The problem is this moves so fast. I need like a smaller scale uh, changer on this. So is there a way to just go from like one to three and I'm gonna give myself a really small step? Yeah, look how much happens just in that variance. I think that's enough wiggle room. But I wanna find an uneven one to make a bug. So I might not have enough room to find an uneven one. Whoa, whoa, look at this, whoa, okay, check this out, you ready to see something crazy? <laughs> That's crazy. That's another one of those ones that, for the simplicity of its graph, is crazy. It's 3D. Oh, my cats are chasing each other and playing back there. They're playing a game. Sage. Okay, so that's all when A was this value. What if A is a slightly different value? This one, okay, I simplified it. This is like the very simple version of it that now almost looks just 2D. Well, I mean, it should look 2D, it is, but the other one looked 3D. Okay, so we can't see the differences there, so let's try and tweak the difference here a little bit. Hey, Sage. Hi, Sage. This one's like more fully balanced. This totally looks 3D. These are looking like certain shells at times. All right, let's put it at some very like concrete values. Like when A is one, A isn't in the equation. You know, like A, it would be the same as not writing it. Oh, that doesn't do... Okay, so if A is just one, it does this. Kind of cool. Now, that was just my little range of B. Maybe I can make B go for a little further. Let's try like negative three to five. Does negative do anything? Or does it just vanish? Negative does maybe similar. Yeah, negative did similar to positive. We'll give it a balance so it can do the full swing back and forth. 
Um, so that was when a was one. What if I just have a be equal to two because that's a pretty concrete value? Oh, when a is equal to two, it's square-like. It like passes a squircle. Look, remember we did squircles in the other day? That squircle is like if I said x to the fourth power plus y to the fourth power equals maybe, okay, what's about 1.75 squared? Uh, it's gonna be about 3.5. No, it's gonna be about 2.5. Wait, that, that's still too big. Oh, it's because it's the fourth power. That's throwing me off. So, oops. Oh no. Uh, close enough, whatever. It's close to the squircle shape is this thing it passed by. So what about when A is three? When A is an integer, it does much simpler things than when A is not. When A is like a weirder number, it's much more intertwined and crazy. Um, someone said B equals four, it eats me. So it probably means before it eats me, but what happens when B is four? Yeah. So that was all just with these cosines. What if I um, try one of their weirder functions? That's pretty cool. It's It probably goes further than that. It's probably just not showing it. I think it's like limiting the range maybe. Is that because this is only there? Nah. Whoa. This one's pretty cool. Okay. So, yeah, these would get, be good loading screen animations. So, that was that. What about another one? Now, that looks similar. Well, that just didn't work. Oh, well, what the heck? I guess B has to be... When B's absolute value is more than one, it appears. So let's change our range on these ones. Let's make B go from one to 10. Well, This is like a gravitational pull, the way it goes like faster or slower at certain times almost, but like the opposite of some pulls. Whoa, look, pentagonal. This one's like octagonal. Yeah, when we go to like integer-like values or simple rational numbers, it's gonna be extra simple. This looks like an elliptical curve almost, or an elliptic curve. Um. Whoa. These are super crazy. All right, so secant minus one's cool. What if we change one of these? Oh, oh, that's crazy.
Whoa, there's some birds going wild over there. Oh, it looks like there's a bird nest up in that tree. Okay, so that's our time for one second to try and look at the real plants and animals in case those birds do that thing again. You guys should see. So, unplugging just for one second. Oh no! Okay. So, I was seeing some birds go crazy all the way up there. And look at that bird nest I noticed. You see that bird nest all the way up there? Like, right, oh, it's hard to aim. Not there, there, right under my finger. It's hard to aim this, it's like backwards from the camera. And I'm holding it, okay. Right up there, there's a bird nest. You see it? So. Hopefully that'll draw some cool birds to the combo classroom. I think the birds that were going crazy sounded even like hummingbirds. They did that buzz, but I don't know if that's what's the nest there. But hummingbirds are chill. Now, there's also hopefully some bugs still in our planter bin, but we'll check on that a little later. A little more graphing first. So. These are so cool. Can't believe how simple these are, equation-wise, apart from the unnecessary parentheses. All right, what else do we have? That could be cool, but it looks simpler than the others. That one's more boring for some reason. Well, whoa! I need B to go more. I don't add some fractal-esque qualities. All right. Um, let's turn this tan in the middle into back into... Let's put something weird in the middle. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Snail-like. Um, what if we just had a sign on the outside? Whoa! What the heck? What is going on there? This is weirdly uneven. Well, whoa, it's like painting this really weird path. Okay, I need B to go from like zero to 50 and see what it does. Those birds. Yeah, that's trippy. Let's look into the vortex. Whoa. Okay. It's like unwinding a weird ball of yarn. Oops. Okay, so now let's um, turn this guy to a 10, and it's going to go crazy. Okay, let's see what happens. This one winds it up. 
This one spins it around too. This one's chaos. Oh, but it comes from nothing as usual. So if we zoom in, we can be like, okay, nothing going on. Okay, I got a weird little spiral growing. All right. So let's go nice and simple and restart with one of these and see what happens with some of these shapes. That's already weird. Is that just going to vanish it? Oh, there's no B anymore. Well, this isn't the most interesting one we've encountered yet. Um, what else might work for that? Okay. 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 What if I say... Okay. Whoa! We did spirography real quick. Lots of crazy options here. Well, we passed some of these. What about if we stick a B in front there? This is like an extra one. B is too powerful there. Well, that's simple. All right, what if we see what happens if I say sine of the tangent of a squared of theta? <coughs> Did that just fill in like everything in their attempt to map it? This one's too powerful. A squared is, whoa, we got a butterfly for a second. Oh, there's no B in the mix. Yeah, too far too powerful. Okay, I'm getting absorbed in this. We might need to switch activities soon, but we'll be back and forth from graphing. What were the ones that had the cool bugs again? I wrote down my B formula at some point, but I don't have that here, it's in my room. What was the one that worked cool to make a B? Where was that bug generator? Here's some bug generators. I want one of those uh, sideways bugs where we got a B. Because I, I actually found a B that I made a formula of earlier. Okay, let me look up my B formula. I'm just going to cover the screen for a moment and then look up my B formula. So, one second. Secret combo files. And my B formula was... Um, here, wait. It was sine of a tan b theta. And I want those to be there. Negative a half and a half. Okay. We're going to generate a b I found earlier. Check out this b I found. It might have been this one. I just need one of these to be negative. Um, one of these I need to be negative, so, okay. 
I need to be go more adjustability there. And then I wanted this to be 0.5 there. That was the B, the bug I found. This was the first B I found that started me on this quest. Tell me that doesn't look like a B evolved. Now we can also make our slight modification. Whoa, no, it's hard to make slight modifications to the bug because if you go to the wrong fraction in here, it makes it go insane. So A right here isn't like a continuous graphing thing where one thing will go smoothly to the next. B is a little more continuous looking where we can sort of like morph our bug and have him fly. So this, that's like a slightly plumper bug. This negative 1.5 was my original bug. We'll call this the, uh, the combo graph B. And the combo graph B is, or the combo B graph, whatever you want to call it. This fella can get plumped up into some friends this way. This looks more like a fly, because now you have those two wing things on the back. So there's our fly. And then if you go negative 1.5, you get our B. Oop, it won't let me, but whatever. Then if we want to make a butterfly, we add that somewhere here too. That was, um, where's butterfly? We needed our A a certain place. Okay, yeah, some of these are too, too many things for it to handle. These are like when someone asked if it was irrational, it would be more like that. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, okay. Somewhere around here we had our cool butterflies in the normal zone. Maybe it's because I'm in negative lands. We'll put these on to mild positives. But let's put them on to integers. 2 and 0.5. There's sort of a reverse B. We'll put it onto 1. So yeah, that's interesting. Your insect finder, if you want the ones that look like insects on this one, are going and looking for rational, the simpler rational numbers. The more complicated of a fraction in this A, the crazier it is to go. And it there it's a certain standard of what more complicated helps it here or not. It's in comparison to the B value here to a degree, but, or maybe the A, which ones are simple, isn't in comparison, but, it's crazy because if I'm looking for insects in this wild forest of possibilities, the place to look for an insect would be like 0.5 or something that's like a, a simpler one. 0.5. How about 0.25? There's 0.3, and we can see a three-like thing in it. That's like a clover behind a field. Where's 0.25? Uh, I can't get there. There's 0 0.2. 0 0.1 looks a little wild and zero all right well let's put up our um b again and we might switch activities for a second you hear all those crows up there uh so there's crows that flock in this neighborhood one of my neighbors who are cool i'll try and see if they want to show this to the camera sometime they put out peanuts for the crows and the crows come they like do these calls and the crows like come when they're called to the peanuts and they've like nicknamed the crows and stuff and know their behaviors and sometimes the crows will like nest and have babies in their tree and there's just a bunch of crows in the neighborhood that nest in various trees and they do this crow party once in a while where they like all hang out on these trees on the block they must pick different blocks different weeks but once in a while they pick this block and when they do the crow party it is just this insanely loud insanely raucous wild interesting event uh here we're just getting a few crows i don't think it's the crow party today but they're still pretty cool gotta respect your birds so let me take a peek at the comments i dropped my phone in the mud here a little bit ago and i was just getting really carried away with the graphs um Someone was uh, saying it reminds them of Fourier transform. Um, and yeah, that's something that you can draw cool shapes with as well. Um, another way of trying to create things out of shapes. Um, 
and someone's asking if I have Twitch. Uh, so I made a combo class Twitch a while ago, uh, but I haven't used it yet. But I might at some point because I kind of want to do some casual. Oh, I need to plug this back in. I kind of want to do some casual streams um, that are like doing commentary on different uh, things that I want to comment on in like pop culture or in like really bad entertainment or stuff. Um, and so I don't want to get copyright struck on any of my YouTube channels. I'm more like protective of my YouTube channels are like my babies. And so if I ever want to stream related to showing anything I'm worried is copyright, I'll probably do that on Twitch. Um, so I might start like a once a week there too or something, but I haven't set up a strict schedule yet. So I haven't tried it on there yet. Probably will try it at some point. Uh, someone has a request as well. Um, we'll do a request for equations in a bit. So feel free to drop them in the comments. And at some point I will go on there and put them on. Someone said to turn off the slow mode. Um, I think I, if I have it on, it's just for a few seconds because, um, unless it's set weird because I'll check, uh, because sometimes people spam stuff. So, um, I, Put on the thing where it stalls it like five seconds sometimes so that nobody if someone starts spamming it i might notice and be able to remove them first um so yeah it's literally just five seconds i feel like you guys can hopefully wait five seconds in between commenting um the people writing real comments someone's wondering if i'd like to befriend a crow i think so um they are have sharp beaks they're a little scary because they're really smart and agile and could peck your eye out um so i'm a little wary around crows they like i've seen ones that keep grudges there's people i've heard who like have a crow on their block who doesn't like them who will like peck at their head or something whenever they go to the car so crows are really smart but i feel like you got to stay on their good side um but i would be down to be friends with a crow they're, they're chill. I want to be on the Crows team. Um, so, thank you all for joining me for a sec. One thing I wanted to show you is that, so first let me go back to the graphs for a second and we're gonna pause the polar coordinate ones for a minute. We're going to um, go to I'm just going to silence that fella for a second and we're going to go to ones we've seen before because I want to just show a shape that's going to be similar to something I'm going to show you in real life. So remember how x squared plus y squared equals a, oh no, yeah we can use the same a, equals a squared um, makes circles, radius of a. Well, um, then we tried putting weird stuff on them, like if you do tangent of them in the circle equation, we get weird stuff. There's tangent of x squared plus y squared is a squared for, uh, here's some different a's. Um, and if I put a tangent on both, we get that weird fella. Well, there were some, I forget that I want to find them again, that looked like these really like spiky little things coming down at you. Um, not quite these ones. There were some that looked like weirdly spiky. Um, where are the ones that looked super spiky? Um, sine of XY, let's try it. Whoa, that one's kind of spiky and weird. <laughs> Whoa. Let's just see just this. Sine of xy equals a squared. That's already crazy. Sine of xy equals zero. That's the that equation is sine of xy equals zero. Oh wait, I got you back there, right? Yeah. So sine of xy equals zero. So um 
sine of x, y equals different stuff. We can make it do cool stuff. Um, sine of x, y plus cosine of x, y. Now, I was just, I'm just trying to look around because there was some that looked really spiky that I remember that I was trying to um, remember these ones that like came down like weird palm fronds, sort of. Um, so, let's see. Sine of x squared plus y squared equals a squared. Ooh, that's cool. We get all these circles. But these are the opposite of the spiky thing I was describing. Um, nah, that didn't change it. Um, so, sine of x squared y squared plus cosine of x squared plus y squared plus tangent. These are all making circles. These are just like circle generators. <laughs> um, okay, that one made something new. Now we're getting some weirder stuff. So, I can't find the spiky ones. Does anyone remember any that made these like spiky looking shapes coming down because I have something spiky to show you guys in a little bit um and whoever said an equation to make a square yes there are many equations you can make a square with um lots of ways to graph a square um so someone said they found an abandoned crow chick and it lived with them for months before flying away that's cool someone said that Crows like to slide on snowy roofs and play, and that's fun. And yeah, we might do a crow episode if I can get my neighbors to um, want to like let me film their crows and stuff in the yard. That'd be cool. Um, someone mentioned that 42 is the ultimate question. Um, or no, it's the ultimate answer. If they were wondering what the question was. But... Uh, yes, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which that is from, is a great book. In fact, I thought about it recently because uh, when we were passing all these bounds of subscribers, one of the ones we passed not too long ago of how many combo lords are here is 42 cubed. Um, so I'm going to do the request I got earlier of one of these equations. It was um, sine of... They want phi or phi um, x um, so this doesn't really clarify where the parentheses were requested whether it's there or whether the cosine of the x is supposed to be in there wait why do they want a slider for that it's supposed to be like the golden ratio I thought yeah, so we want it to be like the golden ratio. Um, not sure if that's what you meant or if you wanted the cosine of x in it. Like, if we tried to put the cosine of x in it. Did one of those? Yeah, we've seen some of those. So, yeah, I'm not sure about those, but a lot of cool ones. Um, and yeah, it's going to. This is the time, like someone noted to uh, get your chance to get your comments answered because we are growing and growing but I still like to interact with all of you also remember to check out the discord and stuff like that and the patreon if you want to see extra bonus stuff I'm going to upload later today or tomorrow on the patreon a sneak preview of next week's episode and the next week's episode which all of you will get to see I just filmed yesterday and it's pretty wild I mean main channel episode because there's always a bunch of bonus stuff on this channel but the next main channel episode I have a lot of spoilers on the whiteboard over there I better not pan that direction too much but it's gonna be a cool one I don't even can't even say anything about it or I'll spoil it um, just very mathy not as much chaos in that one we've already had a lot of chaos recently um, so yeah, I forget what the spiky ones were, so in a minute 
I'm going to show a rare spiky real world thing that I have that is a rare treat for later. And when I say a spiky thing that's a treat, for once, I don't mean a cactus. Different type of spiky. More gentle, friendly type of spiky, you could say. So, um, let's see. Uh, I'm wondering uh, if I can try and... Um, remember what some of those weird ones were. We're just going to fiddle around for one more second with one more thing I want to check out, and then I'll show you a spiky thing. But first we're going to see if we can find any plants or animals that look like the thing I'm going to show you in a graph. That's our challenge. This time we're going to say that the sine of that equals something like the cosine of that. We're getting circles. These are circle generators. I guess that's the same as saying that minus that equals zero. Um, so many circle generators. Oh, square generator. That's trippy. Look. Whoa, that's pretty cool, actually. When we have a plus right here, circle generator. When we have a minus right here, square generator. That's pretty cool. Or I guess more like rectangle generator. The middle one gets to be a square though. That's wild. What happens if we have multiplied? This generator, whatever this is. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. That's crazy. All right, what if we do it on the other side instead? So what we did was, okay, well, one last one, divided by. Because we tried the other main operations. Woo, that one's intense. This is like a galaxy coming out of each side and this weird magnetic aura. Woo. So now we're gonna put that back and we're going to mess around with this side and do the same thing. That's multiplied. Subtracted gives us a rectangle thing again, except no square in the middle. Divided gives us this thing. Now what about combos? What if they're both divided by? This one got straight when we did that. Lines became straight. What if they're both just multiplied? Okay, it gets simple again. So... What if we just go really simple? Sine of x plus y equals cosine of x plus y. That's a little too simple. What if we do that? Whoa, so that's already crazy. Sine of x plus y equals cosine of x times y. I'm trying to make the simplest be the craziest. Look at that. Sine of x plus y equals sine of x times y. That's pretty wild for a simple equation. What if we make that a minus? Okay, it just flips that. If we make that a divided by. Okay, these are all the points where the sine of x over y is equal to the sine of x times y. What about all the points where the sine of xy is the tangent of xy? What about a plus? Ooh, that's weird. Whoa, look at this crazy one. This is starting to get to that spiky quality I was talking about before. You see these ridges? Spiky but gentle. Gentle spike. That's wild. And that, this one's just straight lines. Oop, and this one's like perfect curves. So if we do that, we get perfect curves. If we do that, we get wild curves. Now, um... What else could we try? Let's try... Okay, let's have one of these. What if it's... Whoa, even if it's just sine of x equals tan of x plus y, we get these kind of off-centered things. This looks like the type of thing that you'd put on, like, wallpaper or, like, the back of an album cover or something and, like, spend a while trying to design. You don't need to. You can just plug in this formula down here. Sine of x equals tan of x plus y. Well, 
sine of x equals tan of x times y. Nope. Sine of x equals tan of y. Okay. So, what if we now try... Whoa, what's that? What's going on there? Okay, this is the type of spiky thing I was talking about earlier. You see all these spiky fronds coming all over? Whoa. Look at all these spiky but gentle things. When you go out, they look spiky from afar. You get close, and they're not as spiky as you thought. Turns out they're nice and gentle. Well, that's just like the fruit I'm about to show. So check this out. This might look spiky, huh? Let me change the camera. This might look spiky, huh? Look at all those spikes. But they're soft spikes. Anyone recognize this fruit? Soft spikes. We have more of them. Check out these fruits. It is related to lychee. So lychees look very different on the outside. The inside of this is similar to lychee. So not exactly that, but anyone else had any of these? It's one of the rarer fruits in my area. I'm sure there's parts of the world where it's less rare. Well, if anyone knows the name, we'll cut it open soon. If not, we'll cut it open a little later in the stream. Um, so I'm going to try some of those quest, uh, requests. Um, and hello again, everybody. Um, someone said R equals theta is a simple spiral. We can go back to those for a minute. Sorry, trig functions. We'll try r equals theta. And that's our classic spiral. That's just sending us around like the classic polar coordinates. It's only stopping there because it, it only told it to process it that far. If I want to go further, I can. Um, so that's our classic spiral. And... What are we able to do with that? Yeah, well, let's just do some more requests here. First, we got sine of x equals, this one is a nonpolar, so it's gonna go back and forth. Sine of x equals tan of y squared. Whoa. We got lots of weird islands, whoa. Well, this is having trouble. It like zoomed in on the page. Okay. It's having trouble seeing this. Uh, where are we? Get back home. We're lost in the ocean. Okay, there we are. There's our island. There's our boat. Yeah. Ooh, lost in the ocean. All these little islands. Um, what if we replace that with the negative sign? No, they don't like that. Doesn't like that one. Um, so someone said sine, cosine, tan of x plus sine of cosine of tan of y. Um, has weird patterns. Where are we? Um... Y equals... This one's weird, yeah. This one has these little micro zones. I like the ones that have these little micro zones. Because when you go to a micro zone, it's like, what's going on in this realm? Well, these guys are happening for sure. And this part, it's having trouble seeing. So we're like, okay, we can try and zoom in a bit. All right, now I can see what's going on here. But like, 
as you zoom in, you get some you can see and some you have trouble with. <laughs> but it's all enclosed in a little micro realm. It looks like a little spaceship. Um. Oh no, I'm. I forgot to do that again. I'm the worst at this. Sorry, guys. Um. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I was doing all of that without showing it. Here we are back to the screen where we can see it. And here's a little spaceship I was talking about where we can zoom in on the realm. You can zoom in on these other little guys. And one at a time, you can absorb them. Do, 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 do. You're like, I'll check out these ones. Okay, well, what's going on there? Do, do, do. What's going on there? And you can like kind of see them one at a time. Now, if I keep zooming in and going this way, these are like the most circular ones at this diagonal. They might even be perfectly circular. So if I like keep zooming and going diagonal here, it might have like a fractal-like structure. You see? I'm like going diagonal, and when they get a little small, I zoom a little bit. And then I go diagonal, zoom a little. It keeps seeming to have this fractal-like structure, sort of. Um, Cause yeah, we're like going down that little tunnel into the void. Beep, 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 beep. Um, and here they're just having trouble with it. So that was pretty cool. Um, someone asked if the fruit is, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, but Rambutin, and yes, it is. Let's look up how other people online here say how they think it's pronounced. Because I'm not sure if it's like Rambutan, Rambutan, Rambutan. I don't know. This one's cool though. I like all these like zones on this one, this graph. Like look at, here's another one of those zones up there. It looks like this is um, some factory chimney and that's like the emissions. And this is like a little cloud over a mountain. Um, so... Uh, it is. It is. Let's see how to how other people online say it's pronounced. Now there are three fruits I've had like this. Rambutan. Let's see. Rambutan. Rambutan. That's what that one says. Let's see another one. How to pronounce it correctly. Oh no, a one minute video? How slow is this guy pronouncing the word? Why, they're all one minute of how to pronounce Rambutan. These people trying to get like ad money or something off trying to tell me how to pronounce Rambutan. Rambutan. Okay, no, I, I don't even know what to trust. Rambutan. We're calling it a ram. When in doubt, kind of go halfway between the two sounds. When I wasn't sure whether to call the cactus spines glockids or glokids, I kind of just uh, put on almost like a halfway between accentish voice where it's like glokids, and you can't really tell which ones you're going for, glokids. So we'll do that here. Ramba tin. We'll try and make sure every vowel is undistinguishable. That one can't be wrong. So, these are pretty cool. There are three fruits I've had that are similar to a lychee, which is a lychee. This thing called a longin, which I also may be mispronouncing, which it, they come on these long like stem-like things and they're, um, those look like little brown pods almost. And then there's um, uh, this, which is, I'm calling it a rambutan. If anyone thinks they have a better pronunciation, tell me. I didn't trust the online one. Um, and what's going on over there? There's a squirrel doing funny stuff over there. I think the squirrel's like burying something because I saw him running around with a nut earlier. All right, you guys want squirrel cam? One second, we're going to squirrel cam. Oh, he's climbing up that tree way back there. Okay, so he's either going to run completely away or come right past this direction. He's like way on the corner. Okay, he's coming this way. Squirrel cam. 
Oh, he paused in the bamboo. Hey, squirrel. All right, that was a squirrel cam. Okay. Oh, I really should be careful stumbling around here. You know how I said I was like, oh no. Okay, that was part of a clock. All right, it was the clock that was already mostly broken, but that certainly didn't help it. Okay, I should be careful stumbling around back here, partially because I just snapped another chunk off the rim of this clock, which has taken a lot of beatings. Um, this is the edge of the clock. This happened when I was filming yesterday. <laughs> um, but yeah, might need to keep it as a memento. It's a classic clock. That clock's gotten us some good footage. Um, but when I said I gotta be careful because there might be piece of glass back here um i wasn't joking i guess so danger zone um so luckily i have a good spot where all the glass goes which is the temporary glass home before it fully gets thrown away which is on one of the broken clocks so now we got enough glass to make a whole army worth of weapons not that we'll need weapons, but if we do. Now, since we're looking at wildlife for a minute, maybe we should take a peek at if we can find any of those worms or isopods that we put in the other day. We put in some really good worms. Yeah, so maybe we'll visit the worms over here in a minute. Um, and maybe, since someone guessed, we'll cut open one of the rambutans. All right, so here's a rambutan. And let's get, hmm, okay. I need to like run and grab a plate so I can cut this somewhere where you can see without cutting myself. So to any true Rambutan fans, um, or obviously Combo Class class fans as well, any fans of either me or Rambutans, um, stick around. I'm gonna go grab a plate and my phone charger. And I want to keep the Rambutans in view. And here's our Rambutans we'll be having in a minute. So I'm going to run, grab a plate in my phone charger, hang out, Rambutan lords.
All right, folks, Revenge of the Combo. We have returned. Combo 2, Revenge of the Rambutans. So, to anyone who uh, didn't take a peek at the graphs later, know that we will again see graphs that have spiky looking things from afar, but when you zoom in, they're not so spiky. This is the opposite of those cactus fruits. Those looked okay to touch, but if you know about them, you know if you zoom in, you'd see spiky little guys. These look spiky, like some of those tangential, I don't know if we can call that, like tangent-based tangential functions. Could be a good nickname. Tangential functions were making those spiky looking things that actually were soft to the touch. And this is like that, completely soft. Some of them I've seen look even spikier. Some of these spikes and arms are pointing straight up. This one was like crunched in a bin with a bunch of them. I bet fresh on the tree, these look like completely spiky. They're soft though. What a cool fruit. So. Um, do, 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 do. And thank you all for everyone who's chatting in the comments. Good attempt. Uh, at asking where people were from uh, to whoever was chatting that. Um, I am from the Bay Area um, and people is interested in me talking about spirituality in a math perspective that will come more so uh, in future grades. I have a lot of philosophical thoughts that I want to share with you guys and as the grades continue those thoughts will be certainly incorporated into episodes. Some of those thoughts are just so big scale, I kind of saved them and I wasn't ready to make the episode yet. So who wants to see a rambutan get cut? Here we got our spiky looking fruit. But when we slice it open... Now lychees, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you eat a lychee when you cut it, they have these like bumpy little red flatter skins. They don't look spiky like that. Um, they drain a lot of juice and you want to like cut them and like hold it up to your mouth almost to like drink some free juice. But this right here, I don't think has quite as much juice that's gonna leak. I think it's more of a solid thing. And check this out. Now, if you didn't know what lychees were, you'd say this looks like maybe an eyeball, but it's just like um, a lychee in terms of appearance, really, and tastes pretty similar. That cool, unique, gelatinous texture and uh, sort of tropical sweet taste. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I a little bit of the seed skin, but mm, yeah, you gotta watch out for the seed. Maybe I'll look up if there's any chance I can grow one of these seeds, although it's doubtful. Um, people um, are saying <laughs> no more red on the coat because uh, Ukraine. And if they mean that that would be supporting Russia, well, I'm not going to avoid the color red because it's a fundamental color and I'm going to be using colors in my life. However, I certainly support Ukraine uh, in the conflict that's going on. So good luck to Ukraine there. Um, and let's cut open one more Rambutan. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Oop, this time it cut off like 
half of the meaty stuff with it. And it got a little bit of the seed off, so let me try and get that seed part off. I think these could have been a little riper, maybe. Or maybe they're... I don't know. Ugh. The seed part wasn't as good there when I had it, when it got stuck on, so I'm going to try and remove that a bit. I'm sure I'm not eating these correctly. So, yeah, this one's having little bits of the seed on the inside stick to the white part, so maybe could have been riper. Still, it's a Rambutins I could get around here. Still super good and cool. There's your unique fruit of the day. They meant no more blood on the coat. I don't have blood on the coat. Um, I cut my leg once out here in combo class from the desk, but I um, this is not blood on the coat. Um, the red was from when I was doing an episode in my first part of the saga of why the word Thrieven must be in the dictionary, which yes, will be a whole saga. I've only done one episode of what will be more. It may even show up in whole books of mine, the Thrieven quest. Um, in the first episode on that, one of the points I had to make is that colors, when you're mixing paint, you get three primary colors, three tertiary or secondary colors, you get six tertiary colors, and so you got a thrieven amount of colors at each phase of like past tertiary and stuff. Uh, so when you're mixing things on the color wheel, I did a little homemade color wheel. Check that episode out on the main channel sometime for folks who haven't seen that. And there was a lot of yellow, red, and blue paint to demonstrate the primary colors. And we got a little bit of each on here. Got some on the whiteboard too, probably on some clocks. Now, in case we need a whiteboard, I'm going to have to uh, remove this spoiler alert one because uh, this is confidential info that you won't see until next week. So not that confidential, just confidential for one week because the next episode will just... For, it's one of those topics that um, is like a normal topic in math some people will have encountered and so like 10 percent of you might already know a lot of the visualizations i'm pointing out and stuff but the other 90 percent of you it'll be a lot more fun to just like go down the rabbit hole from scratch the way i'm gonna lead you um which will mean spoilers won't help it um now the last episode i put out um, is, well, first let me answer these questions. Yeah, people are saying it's interesting how many fruits have spikes when they're meant to be eaten and spread seeds, which is weird. Why would the fruit have a spiky part on it when the fruit's goal to a degree is to be consumed? Now, there's different ways a plant could want to spread its seed. Some plants, it might work well for them to spread just slowly and steadily a little unit at a time. And I was uh, reading that with the cactus spikes, uh, me and my friend looked that up because we were curious. So I was like hanging out with some friends and one of my friends who knows about cacti, uh, I was like, tell me about glockids or glokids, however they're pronounced, because I was making that episode. And he didn't know either. So we started looking it up of why do they want there to be spikes on the edible part? And I think one of the reasons is that uh, it seemed they don't want the fruit to be eaten uh, prematurely, which animals might do. And that if it ripens fully and then like stores a bunch of energy and water for the plant and has other functions while it's doing that, and then falls, it still spreads it far enough for the way cacti grow, like they grow like a little patch at a time. And so they're okay with just dropping the fruit and having it grow like two feet from them. 
Um, but other plants, it helps them more like trees with roots. It might help them more to spread it further and be like, I'm trying to get my apple far from the tree, uh, which is a funny expression. There's an expression that says the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Uh, which is sort of an interesting philosophical statement about like maybe you will be similar to how your parents raised you but um it's which isn't always true the apple often falls far from the tree i think there are ways in which the apple like falls close to the tree and other ways in which apples bounce far from the tree i mean in the philosophical sense of humans and their parents but uh it's funny because that expression is almost backwards because it's sort of like uh, guys, the apple's entire point is to get far from the tree because um, their goal is to make a new apple tree with enough room for its roots. Um, so some plants might have more of an advantage to wanting to be spread certain ways. And here's an interesting one, cayenne. Um, so like cayenne peppers and other hot peppers like that that have capsaicin in them as this hot thing. Um, birds don't get the same hot taste we do. Birds can eat really hot chilies and not have that reaction. Humans have adapted this reaction to it. And there might be some coevolution. I need to research this more, but coevolution, I believe, between birds and peppers for birds to eat them and have a good relationship with them not getting spiced out because the peppers would rather be eaten by a bird than a human because a bird's gonna fly really far, shit them out somewhere far, and then that spreads the seed really far. Humans might eat them and spread it not as far. And so it actually helps uh, some plants to want the bird to be the one that eats you because those will fly and take you extra far, your seeds. Um, as for ones that are fully spiky, yeah, it's interesting and weird like the cacti maybe just drop and spread the rambutan i don't know why they decided we will get a spiky like appearance i'm not sure what about that helped it maybe those little green bits were getting sunlight they were like chlorophyll things or something not sure um so that was my tangent uh let me also plug in my phone so that i can make sure that this doesn't die, so I can actually read comments. Now, ironically, while I plug in my phone, I'm just going to leave it plugged in for a minute where I'm not going to be able to look at comments. So I'm, uh, now I can't see comments for a minute, but it's because my phone's charging. So for anyone who hasn't seen on the main channel, you should definitely look at the latest episode there. We talked about dice. They got spilled everywhere, but it was a good time because it rained and we're really building that dice carpet. And to anyone who said they were upset about the dice falling on the ground, well, how can you be upset when we're getting like more and more of them literally embedded? These dice aren't like above surface. These are like completely flat surface it's like a carpet so my goal is to get more and more of them just as that flat dice ground right there um so it's working because when they spilled it rained and then i stepped on them and we got a bunch of blank dice so blank dice are going to are going to come in handy for designing a bunch of our own cool types of dice and we got these dice in dice that are going to let us get two rolls at once. Think about how much time I'm going to save in my life by rolling these double dice. The amount of time that I'm going to save in my life with these is probably equivalent to the amount of time that I made making this statement though, so it counteracts. So we've probably at the end of this statement describing the double dice and then with all the times I roll the double dice, broken even on time. Now, we also got a bunch of other types of cool dice um, and just a large amount of them. Dice vanish back here. <laughs> they must be like absorbing into the corners somewhere. Or I don't know, maybe a squirrel's taking them or something because I have bought like 1500 dice at this point and 
while they're everywhere, it doesn't look like 1,500 dice. They get, like, absorbed into the corners and the portals of the world. So, um, for a minute, maybe we will go back to our graphing soon. First, um, let's see, I kind of wanted to discuss with the rolling dice things. Um, was there anything else I wanted to mention from that episode? Um, hmm. Nah, I'll just say you guys should watch, if you haven't seen it, the dice episode. It's fun. Uh, they're all fun on the main channel, even though this combo class bonus channel has soared past it. The main channel is really the main passion project of combo class, and the main arc with all of the secret lore and stuff, although there's a lot of lore in here. And that's where the learning is deepest, probably. But of course, this bonus channel's fun, and mostly from the shorts, we have gathered quite a combo army here. We are not far from five sevens in a row. Seven, 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 seven. seven. That will be coming quite soon. Um, now, anything else I need to mention? I guess one thing to mention is that it is almost New Year's, so although it's uh, kind of, I kind of want to simultaneously recommend thinking about what types of resolution-y things have culminated over your year or that would be good for you next year and being skeptical of those things because the new year shifting is just a random decision that they decided this is when the calendar is going to do that really if you wanted to mark a point that was a natural state of new year it would probably be a solstice or equinox where it's um or equinox, is that how it's pronounced? Um, where you have the days at the shortest or longest. Because um, the solstice and the equinox are when in certain hemispheres the day is at its longest or shortest. And it's usually on like June 21st ish and December 21st ish for the solstices and that means that the winter solstice is pretty soon in fact let me look up when is the winter solstice this year because it can vary a day or two based on our calendar so this says it is in the northern hemisphere um, the winter solstice 2022 will be in the afternoon of Wednesday, December 21st. So next Wednesday in the Northern Hemisphere is the longest day of the year. I mean, no, 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 the shortest day of the year, the opposite of longest, opposite, anti-longest. Um, so that means that the amount of sunlight to nightlight you get is at the ratio most squeezed toward getting more nightlight than sunlight. So um, that's a very wintry time, and so it makes sense that all of the different religions put their holidays there. Um, I'm going to be doing a holiday-ish celebration with my friends tomorrow. I don't know if any of that's going to make it on stream for you guys, because I'm just going to be partying with my friends, but I'll see if any of it makes sense to document. I'll, I'll, it probably makes sense to document some for historical purposes, and I'll see what might be shareable with you guys. Um, but I know that tomorrow, me and my friends are doing our own version of a wild version of a winter holiday of um, I want to tell you more about it but then it's gonna lead you on track to find a bunch of crazy old videos of me and my squad in the past and for people who think they have found them probably haven't even found half of them so I'll tell you more about me and my squad's antics later and then as time evolves because you'll be able to then find more and more weird stuff of my past and the lore will deepen um, but it's good time and season anyway of whatever holiday you do to enjoy if you have any shelter and warmth and people who you want to give gift or whatever. That's what all of the major religions or cultures decided to do 
at this time is like, oh, we're going to put our main gift giving holiday right in the middle of the winter because that cheers people up when it's all cold and the days are short and when you don't have any good fruit on your trees and stuff. So good season to celebrate your comfort when you're sheltered from the cold elements. So out here in the combo class, it's pretty nice and cozy now that it stopped raining, even though it stopped raining like two days ago, but it was raining hard enough that it's still like super mud back here. Um, surprising it's still that muddy. I guess it's because it doesn't get as much sun here because of the tree up there. Um, and now, let me grab my uh, phone because that was just me doing my little combo chat for the minute. And uh, my phone's all the way over there, so I don't even know if people have been commenting or not. And people probably want to see more graphs soon anyway, I'm aware, but we're just doing some combo chats here and there. So thank you, let me grab the phone and check the chat. And people were mostly just hanging out or listening to combo chat, but yep, birds and things like that we got. And someone's saying where they live, the winter solstice only has five hours of sunlight. That's dark, that's pretty slim, so you don't get too much there. That's rough to have five hours of day. You gotta really try and take advantage of it. Um, now, we can switch back to the graphs for a minute before we think about wrapping up or changing gears. I wonder, actually my other question was whether would be, we'd be able to do a campfire tonight because here we have um, some wood I collected from the street and made into a little campfire shape right before it rained. You see, I even had started setting up my fire pit, but then I let the clock fall on it and stuff because it all just got rained on. Now. Yeah, this cardboard feels like it dried. So wait, does cardboard burn if it's been uh, wet and then dried? Is it still fine at burning? I mean, I assume so, but some things change after water. Um, just testing, guys. Um, so... Yeah, I think it's burning maybe a little less than usual, hard to say. So, if we start a fire, maybe we could get the logs to still go, but I would get some new cardboard maybe. But I was wondering if the logs are going to be dry enough to do a fire if it rained on them like two days ago. They feel a little damp, honestly, but hmm, maybe with the right action, they don't feel too wet. When I looked it up, I mentioned on the other stream, online it's like oh yeah if your firewood's wet don't worry it takes uh six to eight months to uh fix and i'm like six to eight months and then it's like well if it just rains on it a little bit it probably won't do that i'm like oh okay phew and i was like wait but what are you talking about then if you mean <laughs> if you're not talking about rain like dropping your firewood in a giant vat of water and <laughs> when you're carrying your firewood right next to a lake and it slips um, so I think this wood feels dryish. I might also just go on the street where I got a lot of this wood. It was just big trees on the street, just dropping branches, just like picking up branches from the street. It's probably going to help someone whose car wouldn't be able to pull out from the branches anyway. Um, so probably doing a task for the public by gathering that firewood. Um, someone's, um, wondering if I checked the pie sub and thing that they came up with in the server a bit ago. Um, I don't think I did. I haven't looked at all the corners of the Discord server yet because I've been super busy. So I was mostly only posting in the general one and then I like just started posting in the, some of the other channels just like yesterday-ish and I want to check like the math one and stuff. I haven't had time to really investigate there. Super awesome that people are doing their um, cool explorations and figuring out uh, random math stuff or just playing around with things and chatting in there. Um, I definitely will be joining you at many times. Um, hopefully this weekend I'll have a little more time to randomly fiddle around there. To anyone who's not in there yet, they should join that Discord server for combo class. A lot of fun stuff going in there. 
and maybe we'll go back to our graphs. Um, now, this was one that we had left on, and they wanted one that looked pretty, or I wanted one to look pretty uneven for our bug finders. So here's a good bug finder someone said maybe looks uneven possibly. R equals theta sine a theta. And then they said with a is negative 4.8. Wait, we need to go here. That doesn't work at all. Wait, maybe I got some of that wrong. Theta sine a theta. Yeah, there must be an extra one in there or something. No, it's there. That's it. That's because it wasn't turned on. Cool. So, let's see what happens when we change that some more. Yeah, that one's nice and uneven. Maybe we can make some bugs out of this. Or is this just like a... Oh, wait, this just has A. So, yeah. There's a lot going on there. Where can we find a simpler version of this that doesn't spiral out of infinity? Maybe, what if we replace some of these... Okay, tangent might make it even crazier. Okay, yeah. So. Well, that's cool. Look. 1 over theta times sine of a theta. What's going on there? We get a super uneven flower thing. Cool. What happens if that was cosine? Whoa, this one's cool when it's negative one. Look, I think it's just not filling in the inside maybe because we didn't tell it. Whoa, if we tell theta to include negative, I think it will have that. Also like, yeah, if I up this value, it's like looking at more stuff. So I think it can fill in that hole. It's like most of the stuff in there. Whoa. That looks like a spider's eyes. So that's trivia. At this scale, it looks like a line. At this scale, it looks like one of those infinite circles on either side, but they're actually like looped under. So all right. That one's pretty wild. What if we shrink our A? Okay. Yeah, this is one of those ones where when A is not a simple fraction, it gets really chaotic. Okay, where's what about A at zero? Oh, whoa, that looks like an I. That definitely looks like an I. Look at that eye. Oh my god, that is completely an eye. <laughs> Tell me that's not an eye. Whoa. That is crazy. Okay, so that one looked just like an eye. That one looks pretty cool. That's like an eye staring through a hallway. That one's, there's another eye. Whoa. Whoa.
That's wild. Wow, look at that one. It's like a big X. No, this is a giant X. Oh, I found one earlier. I need to dig back up that I like uh, figured out on my thing that looked kind of like um, this. Oh, okay, I found some cool ones I wrote down that I'll show you later. Let me dig them up when we're on a break. Um, this one's like a big X. What is it out here? Yeah, now it's like a 3DX or something. Make sure this is plugged in. Okay. So that was all of that wild stuff. Let's switch these. Let's say theta over A. Okay, now we have different direct, like a plus instead of a times. Whoa. Whoa, it's, there's these simple ones in between, like there's A equals negative two. Wow, look at that depth. Look at these like four petals. That would be so hard to paint if you were like trying to. Um, someone's wondering about graphing regular polygons. Uh, yeah, apart from squares, it's harder to do it uh, without, the easiest way is like to say it's only following this for certain points. Um, or using absolute values, there might be ways. That's a good question. I've looked uh, into it a while ago. Um, there's not like a hyper easy one right here without setting limited ranges um, to graph ones beyond squares, but there are workarounds that are cool. Um, I'm going to do some main channel episodes at some point about which shapes you can graph, and then it'll definitely involve some of the coolest ones we've found during these streams as well. Oh, at first it looked like a plus, but when we go out, it actually looks a little different. Yeah, it actually has those dimensions. So I guess if we go far enough out, what slope are these lines going to get to? Is it going to divide it more into eighths? Or is white going to dominate the screen? Yeah, I guess white is starting to get more and more dominant. All right. So what other loops can we throw into here? What we could do is Okay. So, what if we say we want um, tan of a plus theta? Well, that doesn't do much. But a times theta goes really crazy. We get our spire graph. Let's see what happens if we put a to like integer steps. <clears throat> These are like the integer simple points or the simplest. So two gave us four, three gives us six, like three on each direction, four gives us eight. Yeah, so like on the simplest points for this one, we're getting the amount above and the same amount below of the A value. Like there's five like inner regions it looks like. Or like if you're counting the amount of lines we get, 
we get a total of four times a amount of lines when it's an integer. There's 24 total lines there. I mean, they're not lines because they're not going straight, but you know what I mean. So those are the integer values. What about like the half integers? So now we're gonna do our step uh, going by allowing halves. So the half integers get a crossing point. Just one crossing point though, it seems. Does that mean like one quarter integers will get two crossing points or something? It looks like it. Yeah, look, one quarter ones get two crossing points. Same with three quarters. Now, if I could do third, it would probably work well, but I don't think I can. Can I set this step to thirds? Oops, one third, yeah. All right, so bug time. No more third steps though. Actually, yeah, third steps. I want third steps. This is a complicated bug. This is like one of those uh, super thick bugs you encounter. Okay, maybe the step of thirds is making the computer go slow. Sorry, computer. Also, maybe having that hang out there is making it go slow. This is a thick-winged butterfly. You see, we got like thicker wings this time. And a thicker body. This butterfly's thick. Okay, that was too busy. This is one of the ones where we need a good ratio. Two. Oh, there's a hyperfly. This is a cool shape. Uh-oh, no, 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 I don't want to zoom into Desmos. Okay. No, 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 it's zooming in on the page. Okay. I think I'm just like, maybe it's either my computer or Desmos. I'm overloading something. Something's going slow. We're going to give it a little pause. We're going to let, it might be my computer that's getting overloaded. We're going to give it a little chilling time. So, um, to whoever was wondering what we were doing, we were finding cool shapes that are bug-like or plant-like and lining them up with also finding cool plant-like or bug-like things in the real world. And here's this one that, to anyone who didn't see in the other stream, bell pepper that was once green, it matched this one and then turned like this by hanging out over time. So literally just getting overripe. I think it would have done it on the vine too. Turned orange um, because orange bell peppers were green bell peppers before and could have been eaten as green bell peppers. And some red ones were orange and green before that. In fact, most could backtrack like that to a degree. It's not like 100% of the time, but a lot of the ones are grown as just different stages of ripeness of the same plant. Da, 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 da. And this one I might try and plant in the planter back there, which might be an activity for a little bit from now would be to 
see if we can dig up any worms or anything. And um, we got another equation request. Maybe I'll type that one in in a bit. But um, right now I'm giving my computer a little rest before I like destroy it by accident because um, it was having a hard time handling all the bugs on the graph and stuff. So we're gonna maybe take a little animal break and what we can do is, like I said, see if there's any worms, isopods, or beetles still hanging out in my compost. So for those who are less fans of seeing worms and stuff, you might not care for this bit quite as much, but trust me, worms are our friends. Now, we could even gather new worms if we can't find any. The goal will be to find some, but I just need to check how my planter is doing. Okay, everything's going crooked with the rain here. Here we got our little planter zone. Here was a pot of now rainwater. And this is the shattered clock. So I almost sat down on this yesterday while we were filming. That would have been really bad. I um, was dealing with the other clock and I had put all of like the broken shards on just one clock and then um, I was like about to sit down and tell my friend to start filming and then I was like oh nope don't sit down this is on the chair so that would have been bad uh, he wasn't even filming so it would have been bad and not on film um, so this we need to relocate somewhere um, There we go. By the way, we've gotten some really good glass breaking sound effects in, oh, in combo class that I feel like um, some producer should use those in their beats. Um, someone should sample the glass shattering noises from some of the main channel episodes because we've gotten some like really legit shatter effects. They could use those like if they need to like add a shattering sound to a movie. Um, let me tip the laptop more this way so if it falls, it falls forward into the dirt and not backward um so this is our little planter Ooh, we have a clock hand this came off of some clock um save that for later um now whenever i put worms and isopods in here they like completely vanish and of course right now you're gonna be like yeah they're under the soil but even when I dug and looked around in the soil for them last time, they were like gone. But I'm wondering if hopefully these ones here have started to make a home. And maybe I'll just leave them be for now though. Um, it's about time to do a planting stream because these have already ended up half planted, but we're gonna officially plant these and grow some weird oniony stuff. And we're also going to plant the potatoes I've been saving. And I've been saving them because it's supposed to be better to try and sprout them if you're trying to make crazy sprouts out of them. Once they've already semi-sprouted. Um, so we're trying to get little alieny things growing out of them already. Um, out of all the nooks and crannies of the potatoes. Um, but... Yeah, I'm gonna start putting them in here. Let's put all of the stuff that is ready to plant soon in here, and we're just gonna let it start getting absorbed into the soil if it needs to get a head start. So here's the potatoes. There's other sizes of potato too. That's probably enough of that size. We don't need that many actually, because um, we have a few other variations. Um, now, one thing to note, if you ever need a really durable fruit, <laughs> Pumpkins seem to last a while. These pumpkins that I got for the pumpkin episode, that was the Halloween special, still look brand new. I mean, they don't look brand new because they've been through the combo class experience, but they don't have any natural decay. Um, and so, yeah, these things last a while, apparently. I'm used to getting the pumpkin that you cut open. And when you cut it open, like for jack-o'-lantern style, it doesn't last a while, but... Apparently, if you don't jack-o'-lantern it, it lasts a really long time. Uh, so where was the other thing that we were going to plant? We had garlic. and the, Oh, here's the bigger potato. So here's 
another variety of potato. So we'll, they're not all gonna end up in that corner. They'll end up sort of separated a little bit so we can have a few experiments going on. Um, and then we're going to want wherever that garlic snuck off to. Now it'd be cool to plant one of these rambutan seeds, but I don't think even in the best case scenario we have room for a rambutan tree. I need things that grow on bushes um, or vines or at, at largest a shrub. Although when I took a class called shrub identification, one of the first things they told me was like, well, it's kind of subjective what's a shrub and what's not. I was like, what? what? Why'd you name your class after that? <laughs> um, but yeah, so shrubs are botanically subjective. Um, sort of just means small tree, kind of ambiguous. Um, so somewhere around here, there was garlic. Here it is. Okay, this is the dirtier part of the stream. One moment. Uh, there we go. So here's some garlic that we're also going to see. It already is sort of blossoming like a little green thing out of the corner of one little part of it. So that'll probably make some cool green stuff. And then we have room for some more wacky stuff in there. So who knows what else we might figure out how to plant. Um, and then <laughs> here, funny enough, you know how this was and is kind of still being used as a desk. Well, my desk still has like the drawer parts of it open to a degree. I can see like a paper in here. There's probably spiders like crazy in there. Um, and there there's a drawer. <laughs> so the drawers of the desk, they're different directions than they used to be, but <laughs> that part of it is still functional. Although, as you remember, it used to be like a whole actual big existent desk um so that was our little um tangent over there i was thinking of digging up into the worms and checking on the worms and ice pods by hand maybe we'll do that in a minute but then my hands are gonna be really dirty and i keep on like getting dirt all over my computer and i feel like i'm detracting from its lifespan um so Real quick, let me check if any of you endured through that wildness, and you did. Thank you. I love you, Combo Lords. You are all so awesome. Um, and there's some more ones that people say stuff that looks like simple bugs, and lots of fun stuff. Someone said worms crawl on the surface if you knock on the ground in a particular way, and that sounds interesting. I need to learn that technique. Give a little knock and all the worms come up. That'd be an epic party trick. Get to someone's house, you know, you like knock on the door and then you knock on the soil and when they open the door, they see all the worms rise. So um, I might have to go back to see the bugs that someone recommended real quick. And then maybe we actually will dig in there because now I'm feeling regretful that I did. I went all the way over there and I didn't even dig around for bugs. So we'll see. On the other hand, I keep adding bugs from the compost to there, so it feels like at some point we'll hit our amount of bugs that are necessary. So I will go back to the screen though, um, to the Desmos. This time I'm actually gonna shrink myself first. I'll actually make it work, guys. This time I actually did it. There we go. So this was one of the shapes that was pretty cool. And um, the one that looked a lot like bugs, apparently, is why I wanted to put this back because I like finding little critters. I like finding ones that look like stuff. So like so far in the couple streams we've done on Desmos, we've found things that look and this is like the maybe third or so of these Desmosy streams. And it's um, so far we found eyes forests, oceans, pebbles, beaches, bugs, you know, of the butterfly type, bee type, fly type, moth type. Uh, we've found portals, we've found stars, planets, flowers. 
You get so much stuff from these equations. So this new bug-like one that caught my interest is someone saying if we try r equals uh, the tan of negative first power do, do, do. cosine do, 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 a one plus cosine theta. So yeah, this is uneven so far. So this looks like a good possible bug generator. Let's see what happens when we go around here. We start, so here we got our um, cardioid-like shape. I don't know if it actually hits a cardioid, but it's cardioid-esque. Here we loop around. Ooh, yeah, whoa, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. It's going through and like painting and getting more loops in it. One extra loop at a time, that's wild. Whoa. Let's set this to a smaller a and a smaller amount and watch it. We'll set it just from zero through five and see it play. That's cool. So the first question that we usually try in one of these situations is what happens when these things change? Uh, one thing I can imagine is this one could be a B that just starts out equaling one. What happens when B is different amounts? Because B itself can sort of start off with this different thing. So maybe that'll make A do different stuff. Yeah, each of these B possibilities starts kind of weaving it different. Okay, so now here we're going to have, instead of changing B, I'll put that back to one. And now we can get rid of B. We're gonna change one of these to sine. Sine is very similar to cosine, so it might not change much. Now, what if we change them both to sign? This is a bit different. You look at it looked like sunglasses for a second. Wait, we got an infinity sign there, but what was that one? Look at this. You got some good sunglasses right around this range. Don't those look like sunglasses? So yet another shape we have found. Um, now what happens if one of these was a tangent? That might get wacky. Big sunglasses, mother nature's sunglasses. Whoop. Now what happens if they're both tan? Okay, this is gonna have trouble. It's having trouble. Okay. Oh, it's killing it when I try and do this one. No, 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 I can't do it, can't do it. Okay, it's freezing everything. Um, put them back to sign. Calm down, calm down. Okay. So, now we're gonna try if this instead of tan. There, we do a different one. What if we reverse that and make this one that? Now, are these ending there because of this range or not? No, that thickened them, but it didn't make them stretch farther. So no, no matter how big I tell it to worry about theta, it's still stopping there. Ooh, we made a bug. It's a 10 leg spider. We made a bug. There's a spider. This is, whoa, look. 
So daddy long legs. You know those spiders that uh, perch on your wall? The little thin legged ones that are nicknamed daddy long legs sometimes? Those ones, they're friends, they're harmless. They're fine. Um, they're those little thin legged spindly white ones um, or like clear more than white. Um, or what color are they? Gray? I don't know. Um, those guys, doesn't that look like this? Or like a water strider. Those uh, six-legged insects that go on the water and stride on the water. Doesn't this look like those? If you've ever been on a river and seen those. So, new types of bug. More and more types of bug. And you want to know part of why we're getting types of bug? Here we're getting six things because threevenness and evenness, when we have twos and threes in the mix, will cause a lot of sixes to be fundamental to math and fundamental to bugs. Threeven, even, almighty six. So, now, let's get some more bugs. That's a scary bug. Hmm, that's not a bug. That could be a bug. Okay, we're, we're overloading the sensors here. We're going to have to um, remove something here. We're going to switch this, so... Let's take out the OnePlus. Now it's going to be more symmetrical, but here, wait, we got to start from scratch. We're getting, we're overloading the sensors. So R equals, and we're going to see which one of these might work well together. We haven't even tried these that much on their own. Cosecant, secant, cotangent. Um, so what happens if we... Try this. That was one of the simpler starter ones. Oop, there we get a little loop. These are cool. And what if we throw another one in there? Oh, that's weird. Whoa. That made it look deceptively simple. When A is negative one, things are calm. When A is zero, things are gone. And when A is one, things are also calm. No. Hmm. A lot of wildness going on. All right, let's see. Um, maybe we can say. Um, I want to do some more that were weird. Very well. Mm, the polar ones are fun too. So there's polar ones variations on circle and spiky ones, and I'm gonna have to see if anyone's requesting anything particular. Um. Do, 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 do. Sorry, let me get down to the comments. Boop, 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 boop. Um, thank you, everyone. So someone's saying I could use inequalities or should to fill things with color. That's true. You, that would be fun to say uh, filled in shapes. So we could say, for example, um, sine of x squared uh, plus sine of y squared is more than one. So that's the area inside these. How can I do greater than or equal? Is there that? Let's do that because then we'll see the outline more clearly. Then it includes the edge. So now we have in these zones, but what happens when I move my A? Right now, green looks like islands and white looks like ocean, right? Well, when I expand this enough, 
Wait, no, I don't have the A in there. What was I doing? I wanted to put that to be A. So here I'm going, and this is where I was. A was one. Green is like islands of this weird sort on a white ocean. And if I morph it, we're getting like, ooh, the islands are getting closer to each other. The islands are getting closer to each other. And now look, everything touches for a moment at zero. And then look, we go negative. And what's happened now? The green is the ocean and the white are the islands. They've sort of switched roles. Now this is an extra crazy version of a simple one we can do of that. If we remove the squareds, it's still pretty cool. Um, Cause we can still enjoy seeing like, look, green is ocean, right? Or here, we'll do slider on this. Well, that was, okay, slider didn't give it the right speed it deserved, but. You see how it switches what's dominant? Oh, but what's extra cool too is look, right at the middle. It hits a grid for a second at zero. We hit a grid. Checkerboard. But the checkerboard is really one circular thing turning to another circular thing. And they just like counterbalance in a square way right in the middle. Circular, square, circular, circular, square, circular. So that's fun. What happens if we just square one of them? Okay, that's something. And we could see it go the other direction if we want to. We could have made it go uh, opposite way. Uh, and then now we're going to um, replace a few of these with stuff. So cosine, I guess, gives us the same. What does tangent give us? That's interesting. Okay. What if they're both tangent? Ooh. What if we multiply them? Well, this is weird. This is like a squiggly checkerboard. It has like traits that make it look like a checkerboard, but it's not. There's our checkerboard. That's trippy. It does make a checkerboard at one point when A is zero. What about one one? That makes, this is an interesting grid. I wonder if this sort of grid has a name because it's like, um, it's like a hexagonal with triangular in between grid, but like spaced out weird. It's like using like these 4590s and these like weird stretched hexagons. Um, so this is an interesting type of grid. What happens if we did these with the signs and multiplied them? Ooh, whoa, that one's kind of cool. Whoa. Polka dots. To whoever wanted a polka dot equation, it's sine of x times sine of y is greater than or equal to 0 0.7. 
So, um, now let's see. What if, yeah, that's the same thing. Um, let's try minus. Is that going to do anything interesting? Nah, that's similar to plus. What about divided by? Oops. Ooh, that one's pretty cool. There's a weird grid. I like these weird grid ones we're getting. Okay, wait, wait, wait. yeah, what's, yeah, see, this is that other grid we saw before with the, like, this is a sideways version of that one. We saw this grid a different direction. And then we get hourglasses. This is our, um, our hourglass grid. We got hourglasses out here too. And we hit a square point. Yep, we hit perfect square. So, warning, warning, we're putting a tangent in the mix. Um, all right, and I'll check one earlier. Um, this is a weird checkerboard. This is like a flattened one, you see? Like, whoa! Yeah. Those are trippy. All right. Um, yeah, I will check out that earlier formula I missed, which this one is a totally different type of um, language we were using. Yeah, this one does look like an explosion. I'm not sure if I got that one in right. But yeah, that one does look like a, well, it also looks like a dandelion flower, not my cat dandelion but like the actual flower of a dandelion. Um, now, let's see what else we got on there. Um, you guys are still seeing correctly, right? Yeah, cool. Um, let's see what else is going on here. I like how all these squiggly ones, like, to get from one squiggle to the other squiggle, they pass a square. Like, that's so unsquare. That one's over there, the other one's so unsquare, but it has to pass it on the middle way. So, there's our checkerboard. Um, and what other fiddling could we do here? We could, I'm gonna put them back on the same side of each other. I mean, like, next to each other instead of numerator and denominator and we're going to go back to sine of x plus sine of y is greater than it and right now we have it at zero i'm going to take this one off for a bit um and we're going to try um putting an a in one of these well that didn't work well that did something now we can choose our type of polka dot. Hmm. 
You can choose if you want white on green or green on white. See, we got our green on white variety and we got our white on green variety. Sign of A. All right, sign of X plus sign of A. So this just grows and shrinks it, I guess, because we got it on both of them now. And this is making it go our other ways. Mm. Ooh, this looks so much like an ocean. This looks so much like an ocean. That is an ocean. It just blows my mind how much all the graphs look like real world phenomena. Like if you're up close in the ocean, it looks kind of like these shimmers. Like you see these shimmers when you're looking into the water. And then when you're like further, you can see waves like more like that almost. Um, so that's a good one. What if we say sine of A over X? What's going on there? We're getting something weird in there. Whoa. Um, what about sine of A plus X? Ooh, this is a different type of waves. Yeah, some waves of the ocean do look like this variety too. Good, I'm streaming. Um, stay on page. Yeah, lots of these are similar types of waves. So, maybe we'll throw one on that side too. Nah, that's doing the same thing. So, multiply. Now we get a double wave. There's another type of wave. Here we get um, on the way to go between two waves, we get two blocks, like squares with rectangles there. What a crazy set of graphs. So lots of cool waves and someone's um, wondering when I'll find animals in real life. We did find some in real life earlier in the stream, but well, no, we didn't really. We found there was a squirrel and there were some cats. So that's a start. Squirrels and cats do count, but we could try and get some more isopods and worms up in the mix. That's another type I know how to locate. Um, we also could try and go in the front yard for a little bit and see if there just happen to randomly be any other cool plants or animals that pop by there. Um, but the main type of animals we're going to be able to locate in real life were the ice pods, the worms, and the cats. And we already got a cat meow from Dandelion and Sage. Um, 
it is getting dark out here. So if we were to continue the stream out here, that would require possibly testing this firewood. Um, so we could see if it's too damp on the inside or if it has any burnability to it. Uh, I wouldn't have too much faith for it to start a fire, but I could also uh, just see if somehow there's any other scraps of wood to gather. Um, could be kind of fun to do a nighttime stream of some sort. And here's the interesting thing for anyone paying attention to the lightness amount. You see how like right now it's still pretty bright ish looking out. Um, right now it just passed five o'clock here. It's 5.05, um, but in like 10 minutes, it's gonna be pitch black. It's so absurd how fast it gets dark out here. So um, maybe what I'll do is, well, I don't know. I kind of wanna do a campfire stream out here, but maybe that'll be a second half stream. Maybe we'll just, um, cut it off, take a miniature break, and then do a campfire stream in like half an hour or something. Um, Cause I need to go look for some more wood on the street. So um, I do have another recommendation for a function. We'll try one more function real quick here. We see, do, 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 do. we got sine of x squared. Um, plus cosine of y squared. Um, is greater than or equal to ten. Ooh, that's already getting weird. But we're supposed to put a y squared here too. Um, ooh, yeah, this one's trippy. Yeah, when you zoom out and they look weird, sometimes that weirdness is due to them just not able to pick up all the details because uh, these can overload the sensors. So some of these are like infinite series of orbs, but it is still super cool to see what happens when you go down different rows of them. Some of them maintain these fractal-like qualities. It's almost like multiplication tables of size of different amounts interacting with each other. Um, someone wants to know my battery percentage. Now that I've hooked it up to the charger, it's going up, so I don't know. I'm plugged in right now. Um, Oh, look at these. Remember we wanted animals? These look kind of like a bunch of little bats or some type of flying insect, like flying in a swarm, like you know, all in a row after each other. So those look kind of animal-like. Um, but my battery is plugged in right now, so it's not a worry. Um, so... I think I might... Cut off the stream, but plan to do an attempt at a campfire stream in a little bit. So that's going to require me pausing the stream, getting some wood of the driest variety I can, um, getting things reset up, and then restarting a stream in like 30 or 40 minutes from now. But that's probably the funnest way to go because then we can get campfire and simulated insanity on our graphs. Double trouble. So um, I also can have a quick bite of food um, that's not just Rambutins. So um, thank you all so much. Uh, very likely, in fact, I will say almost guaranteed, I will be back for a campfire stream a little bit later. Um, so this was our fun little graph stravaganza. Um, and 
Hope you all enjoyed joining me for some rambitins and some spiky graphs and stuff. To any future viewers who just caught this, or to any viewers who aren't around to see me in 30 or 40 minutes for a little campfire, um, I love you. Thank you so much for joining me on my combo journey, and make sure to say hi in the Discord if you use that app, or check out the subreddit and put some stuff there if you use that. And if you're extra awesome, check out the Patreon. And for anyone who is supporting the Patreon, uh, I'll have a cool sneak preview for you guys soon of an upcoming next week's episode. And I also have your names in this video description. Um, so thank you all so much. Um, you're all lovely. Um, maybe I will see some of you in like an hour because I like the idea of making a little campfire and doing a further stream, but that'll take a little setting up. So maybe I'll see some of you then. Love you all so much. And I think I'm going to...